Hello, everybody. It is formal here by myself today as we present another week, week five of the Rift Royale A here at the University of Queensland. Now, unfortunately, my good friend Mitchell Replays Anderson could not make it today. However, we are joined by the omnipresent voice of Mendrix today. So that is why we see a name tag, but no body. Mendrix, would you like to say anything from the heavens above? I will, I'm doing absolutely well at the moment, Formal, and it's pretty crazy that I'm invisible at this point in time. I guess you could call me the Vanisher at this point, similar to a certain person there. I guess I look just like Brad Pitt. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that's a safe assumption. Like, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio just kind of smash together. You get yourself a Mendrix, and I'm kind of okay with this as well. I have this desk. I have so much space for activities. I could do and whatever I want. And social distancing as well. Yeah, it's going to be good. But that said, we do have League of Legends we will eventually get to today. It's going to be from the northern region or regional north, uh, pretty much everything from the Sunshine Coast and above. That is where our game today will be played. It will be Mountain Creek, that team atop, taking on the Maruchidoi Monsters, the undefeated team of the division. So Maruchidor hasn't really played as many games yet. That's one of the joys of Swiss. However, they haven't lost either, so they are kind Kind of on pace to be that number one team in this division mountain creek though is that team at top it's a battle between first and third and i think we're going to see a higher level of gameplay that we've seen so far in this tournament and that's what i love about these competitions as well as you've mentioned with about roughly five weeks in at this point in time these players when they do get to jump into these competitions these grassroots leagues it really begins to actually shine as they're going forward because not only are just they playing to improve themselves in solo queue and in these matches they're also playing at the same point in time to purely um begin to exceed a little bit higher so that way they get to those, those finals and they can become the victors in the end yeah, absolutely, and specifically for Maruchidor as well. This is a team that's been playing within the Queensland Leagues for a significant amount of time, and every time we see them on stream, they have been getting better and better, so excited to see how they will place now. However, before we get too into that, I want to show a quick thank you to our sponsors for this event. Of course, that is Legion by Lenovo. Uh, obviously, Legion, Lenovo, they've been doing so much throughout Australia in just supporting all of these high High school programs sponsoring them providing prize packages including our legion by lenovo savage play of the week i mean they have as you can see on that screen premium performance slick designs into those futuristic graphics and the big thing is that 10th gen intel core again i'm boomer i'm still first i guess i'm first gen australia really it's because i moved here but this is 10th gen so this is so far in the future beyond me and that is how you know it is good well, I'm also first gen, that's probably why I'm invisible as well at the moment in time. The processor can't even see me, that's how fast it's moving to actually render me into place. So, I completely understand that, I don't understand how you've managed to escape that fact of that first gen coming through there, Max. Uh, Max. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know what? It, it took a lot of grit and determination, but a big thank you to Legion by Lenovo, a big thank you to Intel as well. And speaking of Allegiant by Lenovo. I think it's time we take a look at some of those plays that you all submitted to us to try and get that Savage Play of the Week. Now, a reminder, who the winner of the Savage Play of the Week does get themselves a keyboard. And look, I'm going to be frank, okay? We get it. Darius Pentakills, you can do them. We we're looking for a little bit of variety this time, and I think that shows in these clips. Welcome to the Legion by Lenovo Savage Plays of the Week. Our first entry this week comes from Kelvin Grove Green, with Anime Girls Katarina setting up an ace for the three man death loaders. Our next entry is another impressive team fight from the Maruchidor Monsters, capped off with a Yone and Super Mega Death Rocket combo, securing the triple kill for Ab Skills 5. The penultimate clip this week is a beautiful quadra kill, bringing death from below from the Hell King 21's pipe.
To wrap up week 4, we have a pentakill from Don Slime's Echo, acing the entire enemy team inside their own base. So yeah, there you have it. Those were our nominees. And while we did see, you know, Boofy Crackers, who we're going to be seeing a lot more of later today with the Mansfield Minotaurs getting that sick Ione play, is actually going to go to his sort of teammate in team, I suppose, over from the Mansfield Megaphones with this Echo play. Unfortunately, the name's not really up there, so I can't really call out who exactly this player is. Don Slime! There it is. Don Slime pulling off that pentakill, as I was talking before, kind of done with the Darius pentakills, but not done with pentakills as a concept or as a play. And this was a great individual effort. Obviously, uh, Don had been having a great game to get to this point by the sheer amount of damage you are seeing him point out. And even, you know, you can see Fiora feeling, a or Camille, I should say, getting a little bit antsy, trying to bait him in, thinking they could turn it around, but that was not going to be the case, even with the Hextech ultimatum. The pentakill and the keyboard does go to the Don over there for the Mansfield megaphone. So a big congratulations to him and to everyone else out there if you want a chance to win one of these keyboards and you're playing in this tournament, that's that's the other important thing. Please, please, please send us these clips. They're getting tougher and tougher to choose by. There's a little bit of a debate that happened. I was kind of leaning towards that pike play, but I had to concede it to the pentakill. Well, I really do like about that was also the with the extended play was the choice of targeting. Part of the thing you could see that he was actually playing with, I believe it was Don Sign. What he did was he actually managed to move around the Zax to actually find the Aswell directly afterwards. He, he was playing that perfectly and cleanly. Yeah, exactly. And it was those little micro decisions that really did give Don Slime the edge. So once again, a congratulations to him. I know the Mansfield Megaphones have been getting a lot of clips actually nominated, but this is the first time they finally got one to win. So double congratulations. But Boofy Crackers on that Yone is someone we're going to be watching out for, as you can see over there on that Marucci door side. I'm actually going to stand in the middle for once. You know what? We're going to take advantage of this. This is Why not? the formal. Yeah, exactly. This is the formal stream today. Um, but yeah, on that Marucci door side, Boofy Crackers going to be a player to watch for sure, as he is joined by Go Vi in the top lane, Lol XD Kappa 69 in the jungle, Ab Skills 5 in bot lane, and then Liga York on support. Okay, I think you just knocked me a bit to the side there in the process of doing that as well, Formal. So you need to watch out on that one there. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, and then taking them on, of course, will be Mountain Creek. Uh, that is Lil Liam in the top lane, Hurdle in the jungle, Arzy in mid lane, Alpha Storm 04 in bot, and the Hell King 21 on support. And what's interesting about this matchup is a lot of the games we've been seeing so far in this tournament have been, I would say, I'm not going to go start naming exact ranks, but they've been a tier lower, essentially, than what we're going to be seeing here today. I'm expecting, again, this higher level of play, especially considering only one team from each region will advance to the top four. So this is a very important game. Maruchidor obviously still undefeated. Mountain Creek, though, in that first place position, trying to hold them off. This is the kind of game that can kind of make or break your chances in qualifying. And a lot of it also comes down to how practice these guys when it comes to nerves. Nerves really do start to play on everyone's minds. And you start to shake a little bit. You need to get warmed up a bit. You're not really playing the game until five to seven minutes in when, he, when it is these make or break games. And even though sometimes you can say, yeah, these guys have got really good individual skill. They're great when it comes to solo queue. Things like this start to really test the metal of a player. And you can start to see others shine in the process. And again, I, I'll forgive you for being from New South Wales, so maybe you're not quite <laughs> as familiar with this league in the past, but this Maruchidor lineup has kind of always been that team that gets so close to making that big run, but not quite getting there. Uh, I mean, League of York has had some amazing performances. Boofy Crackers, again, kind of picked him out before, is one of those players that could completely take a game over. RZ on the Mountain Creek side, though, is also kind of that highlighted player. So coming into this one, while I do trust Boofy Cracker's experience in tournament play a little bit more than RZ, I feel like this is going to be a matchup between two teams that are very mid-lane centric. 
All right, I'm very excited to see, but I do have one major question going through with this right now. Will League of Yorick be playing Yorick? I ask that every single time they come on stream, and it's never happened once. I'm pretty sure League of Yorick actually did used to be a top laner as well, so it's a bit unique to see them in the support as well. You have, you know, go Vi in top lane and not in jungle, although I feel like when someone's named Lol Kappa X, or Lol XD Kappa 69, you kind of give them whatever role they want to play. At least that's how <laughs> I kind of go by now. There was a substitute we saw at the very end there for Mountain Creek. It will be cute Zergling instead in the top lane. And we're now going into our picks and bans. And I always support a decision to get rid of Zoe. Mitch isn't here, so Mitch can't complain. No Zoe today. Well, the good thing about Zoe is she slots pretty well into most team compositions. She's pretty oppressive to do with in mid lane as well, and she's doing relatively well, not just in solo queue matter, but in also professional matter. So I completely understand them saying, you know what, let's get rid of this girl that on release was an absolute monster and is still pretty much relative or reliable throughout every point in time in gameplay since. Yeah, the next takeaway will be Jinx. Now, and again, I'll forgive you, being from New South Wales, but another ban I'm kind of looking to see I joked about it before, but Darius has kind of been the strange S-tier top laner so far in this tournament where Darius has seemed to get through and just carry games right now. And while I do expect that these teams being a little bit higher tiered ELO, they might not be as Darius reliant or unreliable against the Darius. I still am curious to see if this like trend will continue if we get like our fifth Darius in a row on stream. I would be surprised if that's the case. And again, look, I, I completely take your forgiveness in that matter, but you did mention that even though these guys are on the higher end of the, of the ELO, it is a little bit lower to what we're used to. And that being said, players tend to lean on champions that are very well worth, really, very well versed on. Darius really is a nice pickup for most players really looking to get some quick ELO in that top lane. And basically because of that, they are able to just say, you know what, it's a comfortable pick, strong in general. I get control, I get pressure, I get priori pr lane priority. And that actually allows the junglers to also have a good time. So if they keep on deciding, you know what, people just can't handle Darius in these scenarios, we might as well pick it up, keep on using it to our advantage and winning that way. Instead, though, the priority pick will be an Orianna going over to what should be RZ on Mountain Creek. Something interesting I'm noticing, too, with Mountain Creek's bands is they're getting rid of a lot of those champions that are very excelled at zoning. Uh, Zoe, Caitlyn, and Senna all have pretty massive ranges, and that kind of tells me Mountain Creek could be looking to sort of almost get in Maruchidor's face, and they don't want to get poked out. I do like that idea behind it as well. Mind you, Caitlyn has been a pretty big ban, pretty, pretty big priority, mm. priority just in general. Uh, has been nerfed recently, that 5% movement speed, but the AD growth basically still keeps her in good position. And I can completely understand why they just don't want to deal with it. And the zoning is very important in most lasers, but Orianna is still on the field. She's one of the best zoning mages known to man. And if they ever want to win the zone game, they basically have that with the Orianna pick. And she does synergize quite well with the Sejuani. It's a kind of a ball delivery system in and of itself, as well as being that nice frontline tank. Again, I am so happy to see this rise in frontline tanks, jungles once again. It's no longer about those hyper-aggressive AD junglers anymore. However, something that's unique and probably a, you know, a high school special, the Trindamir top. Now, the Trindamir top is, is, is interesting, purely because... The idea is that that's going to be based on someone that's not going to scale well, doesn't really have the best kill potential as time goes on, but this is what makes the Sejuani pick so good. Sejuani coupled with basically any AD allows her to get that stun that little bit quicker, and by AD I mean melee, melee laner on the top side. <laughs> and Trindamir is an absolute auto-attacking machine. That means that it'll be very easy to actually proc that stun. I expect to see Hurdle up on that top side very often. I do kind of worry, however, though, how well Q Zergling is going to be able to establish a split push if that is going to be go by on the Vladimir in the top lane. Vladimir is pretty hard to kill in those early levels, and then late game should be able to sort of out-sustain and kind of counteract that Trindamir split push. I feel as if the Vlad is a very good lock-in in response. I mean, it's interesting to say the least. The Vladimir could still go mid in this scenario just as a way to deal with the Orianna. I honestly feel it's going to be a pretty even matchup on that top side. Trindamir is no slouch when it comes to sustain as well. He'll basically sit there with a Doran shield or three uh, three beads in hand, basically just pressing Q on cooldown every single time Vladimir Qs him. Eventually, it will get to that point, though, that Vladimir does need to just 
from get out of lane. He excels as a team fighter. He'll have to move out, and Trinimir will be able to do that split push later. The problem is, though, just getting there, like you mentioned. It's a matter of Vladimir's going to get to a point where he will be an absolute monster in those team fights, and Azzy's going to have to find a, a way to actually make that work, or A-Rice is going to have to find a way to make that work, purely on the fact that if he hasn't set up a decent split push already, his team will basically be losing objectives left, right, and center. Yeah, it's always a little nerve-wracking for me to see a split push comp be taken as well in this league just because so many times teams have attempted them and just to figure out how hard it is to properly synergize a team with that split push to get like maximum map control. It's actually one of the toughest things to do that realistically only the best of the best teams can do successfully. I mean, if you watch LCS, you see teams struggle with it all the time. So we'll be very curious to see how Mountain Creek might be able to pull it off. Very interesting bot lane being locked in right now. Vigar and Pike. Okay, so that, why I really like this play in particular, we've actually seen a lot more unorthodox bot lanes come into play. Vega is actually very oppressive of that event horizon early, and it also allows Pike to actually land the hooks. Add to the fact that even one of them could actually play the AD or support role in terms of who actually gets the gold, and already you've got questions being asked by Maruchido about how they're actually going to be able to deal with it. Yeah, and one of the answers might be an Aatrox. Okay, good. Last second, we'll switch it to Sona. I thought we were going to be going full bananas for a few moments in that bot lane, even without Soraka. Instead, Sona will get locked in, so a little bit more conventional on that Maruchi door side. Would have liked to see Lux if they were going to go this direction, especially considering the Lux was still available. However, Kaisa, I can't complain too much with that. What I find very interesting is that Vladimir will be going mid to sort of mitigate that Orianna, and it actually will be a Jax going up top lane to try to handle that Trindamir, and I feel that's a very volatile top lane. Oh, absolutely. It all comes down to whether Trinity can actually bait out the Counter-Strike of Jax early. If you're able to do that, that means that Trinity will be able to win that trade. And really, it's relying on getting some decent crits as well. A bit of RNG in place there, but obviously as time ever extends, you can make it more reliable just by hitting and then keying back. Jax on the other side here, he's happy to sit back and farm up as well. When it comes towards that super late game split push, Jax does win out, purely because he will be able to match his damage to Trinity and he can press that E pretty much at a, a very decent rate once he gets his cooldown reduction item. So when it comes down to it, really it's going to be on Jax surviving early and Trindamir basically being able to get a nice enough lead that Jax can't really come back. If that ends up being not the case, Jax will run away with it. Yeah, and that could lead to, I think, a very difficult tame for Mountain Creek if they are unable to really establish that split push. So I'm just going to slink right back to the center right here. Uh, just oh, because oh, if you're looking oh, at these... Oh, 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 why'd you push me again? Ah. <laughs> so, this is my this is my stage. This is my desk today, okay? This, this is <laughs> I control all of this, but speaking of that control, I'm going back to Mountain Creek and I'm worried a bit about their later game team fights. Not because it's necessarily bad. Obviously, Sejuani Oriana, two great team fighters as well as a Vigar as well. I mean, that is zone control in a half. However, I still kind of like the damage output in a longer sustained team fight from this Maruchi door side. Zach is a more than competent front laner. Obviously, Vladimir and Kaisa can just destroy and you still have your group cc with the sona as well I, I feel mountain creek is so reliant on this top lane going off that if they get into these late team fight situations in theory they might be outgunned the big thing here there is that yes in those late game team fights merchant probably will come out on top but if the game goes even later you still have to deal with the fact that there's a Vega. And now that I'm more, the more that I think about it, that Vega will be AD. He's allowed to basically sit there. He has two champions to continue to hit up those Q stacks. It will get to a point where he'll be able to essentially one-shot Goofy Crackers and, of course, also Ab Skills. That's a very scary thought. Basically, those are your big, your two big damage threats. Take into the account as well that you've got excellent zone control, and everything could really work out in the favor of Mountain Creek. I really see them as going to be basically cute Zergling, continuing to push out for that split pushing pressure and just trying to out rotate Govai. That's the big aim of the game there, while allowing that big four-man unit to actually play out very strongly. So it's going to be one of those cases where, yeah, around that 30, 25 to 30 minute mark, I really see Marushido starting to shine. But if it gets to 35, 40, things may flip. Yeah, it's a small window, realistically, for Maruchi Door to find it, but this is a team that has historically played to those windows in the past, assuming they don't completely run the game over in the first 15, 20 minutes. That's something each of these teams have done. Obviously, as we get later in a Swiss format, these matches get a lot tighter, so it's why these past few games on stream have actually been that tight. Looking between these two teams, I do feel that window, I, I agree, it's going to be super critical, almost as critical 
as those early jungle pathing, specifically coming from Hurdle, as you mentioned before, want to see Hurdle play around that top side, but that could leave, you know, dragon control kind of in the hands of Maruchidor. And if they play those four dragons, that will be a dragon soul exactly at that window you were talking about. Yeah, and that would be actually ridiculous as well, especially if you look at these teams. Uh, a Cloud Drake would be absolutely brutal for both of these teams to actually get their hands on us. So if you really take that into account, Maruchador, if they do find themselves with that winning Drake composition and are actually able to play Dragon Control, they could really find themselves at a massive point of power spike purely in that basis. Yeah, it's something that I'm sure Mountain Creek is going to be aware of, but they still might have to concede, I feel like, a dragon or two if their strategy is to definitely protect Cute Zergling and get them going early. Granted, can't really see what the summoners are yet, so curious to see if Cute Zergling actually is going all in on this split push and sort of running almost like an ignite teleport type situation, which would be absolutely insane, but I've seen similar things, which is why I bring it up. Similarly, if go Vi, it's going to be running that teleport to really try and establish more of that map control. I'm very curious how this early game is going to play out. I mean, Hurdle as well should be having that faster jungle clear as well. That's kind of one of the pitfalls of Zach. So you should think Mountain Creek really would control that early game tempo. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of it comes down to the fact that Jax doesn't have the best wave clear early as well. Whereas with Trinimir over time, with his spins and the fact that he's able to generate crits, the more auto attacks he gets, he should be able to out push there. I can really see there being a possible invade towards that top side. Also, Vladimir takes a while to get going as well. I expect Oriana to actually have the priority in that lane at that point. Uh, whereas once Vladimir does get his cooldown reduction items into play, then he's finally able to keep his sustain up and out push the Oriana. So a lot of it does really hinge on controlling what happens with Zach early. Yeah, I, I would like to see Zach get invaded upon if possible from Mountain Creek. I'm also curious to see how Alpha Storm and the Hell King actually handle that bot lane as well. Just because typically Pikes do want to get out of lane and roam as much as possible and Vigar in theory should be a relatively safe bot laner, I would assume with the uh, Event Horizon stun is able to sort of zone out a lot and can keep themselves, you know, sustained if on their own. Granted, Alpha Storm wouldn't mind having that pike around to help get those stacks going. But if the Hell King and Hurdle are starting to get sort of this roaming gank squad and are able to follow and just really shut down LOL XD Kappa 69, that's going to shrink Maruchidor's window even more. Well, this is why as well that the Sona pick was so critical going into it because the Event Horizon coupled with the Pike's ability to jump in and actually get those picks, it makes things really difficult for ab skills. You really do need to have support that's excellent at pushing that lane out. And as you can see, Sona is going to have the ability to do that and harass and basically stop that pressure from coming in. The other big factor we have to take into account here is if the Zac is able to get a decent clear off and actually focus his attention towards that bot side of the map, that is a very immobile AP pick that you've picked up here in the Vega. He is very susceptible to getting hit by a, a decent elastic slingshot and a very nice easy way to pick up from Richardor to find leads. So if they actually focus their attention towards this bot side of the map, you can really see them running away with the game, especially because they do want to have control of that drag. And especially when it is an infernal dragon as that first Drake, something I'm sure each of these teams would love to grab. Also want to quickly take note, I was kind of correct in my prediction, Cute Zergling is running the Ignite in that top lane. Definitely going to be trying to establish that early lane pressure, and that's just going to make Go Vi's early laning phase that much more difficult. And he has to, that's the big thing here. As time goes on, Go Vi will eventually outscale this Trindomir. Not in the essence of damage, but in the essence of utility that he's able to bring to it. And he can actually fight from time to time. The moment Go Zergling, Cute Zergling uses his ultimate, Jax is just going to queue away, wait it out, and then come back in. And he'll definitely have the movement speed to catch up to this Trindomir. So he really does need to put that pedal down right now, get some early kills, especially when that level six hits. That's going to be one of his biggest opportunities to do so when those cooldown, when the cooldown reduction is still low on the side of Govai. As we do get on to a bit of action, pretty suck standard start for each jungler starting on that bot half of the map. It means they might start to clash towards that top side, which is kind of what cute Zergling would be hoping for if they can turn that around to some more map pressure and maybe even a couple kills. Very early Counter-Strike for Govai, and I feel like that just gives up so much lane pressure immediately, and you can see cute Zergling already punishing him for it. 
basically had to, and this is what we're talking about, having cute Zerg, having that little bit of early pressure early. He jumped in, basically said, I'm going to auto attack you right now. He actually did manage to get the free auto attack in and then followed up with the spin afterwards. So he just straight out won that trade. And yeah, this basically going to be him continuing to push forward here, maintain that pressure. As you can see there, as soon as, soon as he wants to force any pressure, just walks up to him basically blows that counter-strike and, and until he gets to a point that he actually has at least a blade of the ruin king and the triforce this is basically going to be trindamir's lane and i really do like how both these jungles have started towards the bot side of the map because they know there's going to be that early contention especially with the ignite choice from cute zergling what I also like as well is how Mountain Creek is playing around it. As we were discussing that RZ was able to sort of sneak out of lane and get that ward onto the Raptor. So Mountain Creek knows exactly where low oh. XD Kappa is. And you can see they're already starting to position sort of around that jungle, kind of get that scuttle bug. But I feel like with having that one step ahead, Mountain Creek, if a fight does break out, which it very well might with cute Zergling starting to invade, this is, they've played essentially around this and breaking up that channel. Low XD Kappa could be in a bit of strife. Hurdle is there as well. Over the wall we go, cute Zergling, a couple more autos and an Ignite might be able to break the Zac, but Govai is there for the save with just pressure alone still. This is Mountain Creek playing to their team composition. I really like what Mountain Creek, there, Mountain Creek did there. Basically, push out that top lane pressure, look for the invade directly afterwards. That's what we expect. We talked about it in the pregame. But Cute Zergling went a little bit too far with that Ignite. Basically, just take the flash, enjoy the fact that you can do that, get back and have all that pressure on the top side free for you to do. Hurdle can basically sit in the top side of the jungle, get those Krugs as well with the pressure that you had. Now you actually gave up a little bit too much tempo in the process of doing that. And now Govai is going to be safer probably for the next five minutes, actually not five minutes, three minutes while that Ignite is down. Yeah, and especially when you consider the target as well, even if the Zac had been popped, it still would have been quite ambitious to feel like you'd be able to get all the globules in order to secure that kill. So. It was a very high risk play. I liked the team play of it. I liked the macro play, but unfortunately, perhaps a little bit too over eager. I think that sometimes happens, you know, if you're in, you're in high school and you know, you have this big brain play and it's paying out and you just want to go, go, go instead of taking what you have. And now, Cute Zergling could be facing the punishment for it. The flash with the counter strike will be a first blood for Govai. And it all goes back to the fact that Q Zergling used his Ignite early to not get anything for it. He lost the tempo on the top side. Govai played so well to basically say, you know what, now I've got the minion push in relation, in relation here every single time. You might look to actually go for a fight. You can't trade against me. And from that day, he was able to actually charge up his Conqueror and just go for it. And that was very well played by Govai, recognizing that at that point in time, Q Zergling was weaker than him and he could easily go for the quick outplay and now things are looking really bad for Mountain Creek because that was someone who needed to win early. That said, if I'm Hurdle right now, I'm not feeling too terrible because I just got a bunch of free experience as I kind of got to collect that wave right there. I don't know, as someone who plays tank jungles, those are always nice situations, even if it does cost my top laner its life. Uh, this is also why I'm probably bad at League of Legends, might I add. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's the thing, right? Everyone likes the free experience, but I'm sitting here going, no, I hate that because now Zach knows exactly where I am. He knows exactly where my clear is going to be for the next two to three minutes, and he can start planning out where his next gank's going to be because he'll have the tempo the entire time. Thankfully, at this point in time, Zach is still basically recovering from that invade earlier, and he's not really going to be able to take advantage of it. But I guarantee you i wouldn't have, i would have probably just jumped straight in mid lane at that point in time yeah that probably could have been a good play especially considering that lol xd kappa kind of did have that back before so has a little bit of an item advantage as we're getting close to six minutes no team really has made a play on the bot half of the map yet with that infernal drake sitting there finally hurdle is going towards that bot side but it should be worth noting hurdle has yet to recall and buy items so a lot of gold sitting on the sejuani and if maruchidor can time things correctly they might be able to sort of sneak that infernal past them that is something that is definitely in play there. I'm just having a look to see what's happening with the pressure in terms of things happening there. And what makes that difficult to actually sneak it in is the fact that there still should be lane priority coming across from Aruchador, purely in that Sona, just continuing to push things out. Until really there's a couple of items underneath the belt of this Vega, their, their, lane push, their lane push is going to be really delayed in terms of what they can and can't do. And that's going to actually stop them from being able to um, push it in. Uh, well, I'm trying to figure out what they can really, really do with it. Because mm. really there is... Take into account the pike's quite slippery. The pike is able to actually move around. Yes, they can get lane priority and push that in, 
But the big thing that's going to be the problem there is that the Pike can just easily come around from the side. And if anyone's still low and he's right around that level 6 mark, currently on 5, so he should be 6 by the time there's going to be any sort of Dragon Sneak shenanigans, they can really give away a big bleed. So it's that whole about that risk reward at this point in time. I really would have liked them to go for an earlier um, earlier Dragon purely when they did see Hurdle topside. That would have been the key moment to make it happen. Another thing as, as well that I'm just as I'm thinking about, especially while we're watching this top lane, if Cute Zergling goes down right now, still has the ultimate available, so the Umbral Rage will start to turn things back around, but Cute Zergling does not have teleport. And with Cute Zergling now being forced back, Govai does have that teleport. There also is that I possibility that Maruchidor would just have a major man's advantage in any sort of dragon skirmish if Cute Zergling just is unable to rotate down or unable to keep Govai pinned down in that top lane. That seems to be the case now. He's also the, he's also blown the ultimate and the ignite here. So really, it's going to be up to Hurdle to make something happen now. Oh, this he is, took this one is shot risky. too many. Look at the jungle because you have Hurdle showing up. Hurdle's not even needed actually. Cute Zergling is going to get one back. Yeah, that was purely the crit and the fact that he took that extra tower shot there. Govai basically playing with fire, didn't respect it, and ended up getting burnt. Ooh, very very close glacial prison right there. Boofy crackers though able to pull their way to safely. I kind of feel like that gank in mid lane was almost sunken cost fallacy after, you know, RZ as well as Hurdle did go up to the top lane, didn't get anything to try to force something mid, but now that is a critical ultimate gone and cute Zergling right back into the lane um, is in a bit of strife. We'll be able to walk out. Go Vi was very hungry for that kill. Burns teleport for it and didn't really get it. The big thing there is you should be able to push that lane out before Cute Zergling has a chance to get back. You should be able to win out in pressure, or in terms of um, not, in, not only just in pressure, but also in experience, in gold, and just to sort of get back that kill. Really there, Govai should not have gone down. Govai had every opportunity to make the outplay work. All they needed to do was play it carefully and concisely, get those wards up, continue to put the pressure in, and then net, continue netting himself that CS lead. He would have won in the late game anyway. What's interesting too about the situation now is sort of each top laner has been punished in this game by getting a little bit too over eager and a little bit too aggressive. And if we're going to be looking at these play styles moving forward, uh, the over aggressive play style traditionally has been punished so far in regional rift. And it's usually these more patient teams that are able to sort of, sort of hold on and win these tighter contested matches. This is where that teamwork and sort of that next level sort of teamwork and understanding your teammates and getting them to stay calm and reminding them of what those win conditions actually are. And this is where I lean back towards Maruchidor and saying, well, yes, go by did just get over aggressive and get punished for it. I feel like Maruchidor is a team more likely to sort of calm this Jax back down and get them more playing to their team composition. And that's exactly what, we're going to be, what they're going to need at this point in time, especially because they do have such late game teams on both sides of things. Basically, the more that you have when you do bring it towards those team fight scenarios, the better it's going to be for these teams. And when I look at it here, I really do like how this Kaiser is starting to net himself a CS lead in the bottom line. They're definitely going to need that order, in order to take on the fact that there will be a, a Vega that's going to be scaling up. Nice little damage trade there as well, but cute Zergling, I think with that ultimate about to come up, might actually go for this. Yeah, this is going to be interesting, especially with Hurdle from the back end. The Glacial Prison will connect, and a kill is taken by Mountain Creek. Down below, unfortunately, Hell King unable to connect with the Execute of their own. Force of Flash to the safety of the bush, just trying to avoid ab skills. Teleport coming through. That's going to be RZ joining the fray, going straight after the Kai'Sa. The Shockwave does connect, and ab skill stuck in the Event Horizon has nowhere to go. Should go down as Alpha Storm secures that kill. Yeah, that was actually very well played there by the Hell King to actually draw out up skills there. Basically, they had actually lost that initial trade there when the ultimate by Pike missed and they weren't able to find the kills, but looks like there might be a return. Oh, guess not. I guess they're just going to just walk away. I really thought there was going to be an elastic string shot there. But I guess they will take the Constellation Prize in the Drake instead here. Now, what I really want to take into account in that scenario there, when we just go back to what happened, was really Abskills was just drawn in too much by the kill. The target priority wasn't enough. And so it wasn't actually correct in terms of what he decided to go for. And that ends up losing them the initial team fight there. At least they get the Dragon there to make up for it. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on there. I can't really hear you at the moment. I'd like to know if um seems to be a bit of technical difficulties. Am I the only one going at this moment in time? The the voice of God at this point in time? <laughs> or a bit of a spiritual voice there? I hear you. So I'm oh, curious. Now I can hear you back now. There we go. You're back. Okay. 
we're all good. Yeah, so uh, I w it felt like I was having a one-sided conversation. Not, not going to lie, that, that explains a little bit. Counter-Strike is going to connect on a cute Zergling, who's going to try to take this trade back. The Unbridled Rage is available for Zergling, but still not feeling confident enough to go for that all-in. Okay. Interesting retreat right now. I was just saying before though, it's a very late dragon take, I feel like, for Maruchi Doras. They had opportunities to take it a bit earlier. Oh, absolutely. Especially when Hurdle actually was up in the top side sucking up that experience. That would have been the best time to go for it. But I really think that that was just them taking up taking uh, the opportunity in that scenario. They said, well, we've got control. Here comes the Shockwave, though. Yeah, Shockwave connects, forcing out the flash from Lil XD Kappa, who will be able to bounce and boing their way to safely. Boofy Crackers kind of playing as the bodyguard in this situation. Critical ultimate gone from RZ, although Shockwave is notoriously short on its cooldown. Yeah, as well, as Act does have that lost chapter as well, so it should be 10% shorter in that space, so it should be too fine in that regard as well. I think the big thing to take into account here is they're basically just feeling each other out at this moment in time. I think that Counter-Strike will land, yeah. Seems mm -hmm. like Q Zergling's finally stride. Yeah, Cute Zergling definitely feeling confident. Flashing after the kill, gets the flash from GoVi, but with the Ignite, Vi will go down. Cute Zergling, great job understanding these champions' limits. And this is what's so good about it. See, Cute Zergling was just so far behind before, but decided to calm down a little bit, was able to capitalize on the one mistake by Govai, and then using the assistance, or I guess you could say moral support of Hurdle, was able to get himself back into this game, and it's exactly what, what Mountain Creek needed to really put themselves in a good state going forward. Yeah, Hurdle as well, I think. Just being around almost kind of gives Cute Zergling as well this extra sort of confidence to go for some of these plays. Mountain Creek doing sort of what we expected and staying very topside focused. And unfortunately, for Marucci Dora, we haven't seen that really um, reciprocated too much yet in the bot lane. In fact, Shelly's even getting dropped in that top lane as well. That's how much Mountain Creek wants it. They might be able to get this second top lane brick, although... Looks like Lol Kappa and Govai will be able to defend it for now still. This split push is going to become a serious threat very, very soon. And it's not just looking on the side here of just cute Zergling and Hurdle doing well. It's also A-Rise. He's used his teleport effectively. He's been very uh, active on the map and forcing engages in battle to every single way you look at it. And that's actually beginning to really transfer towards that top side. Cute Zergling is extremely accelerated at this point in time. And with all that extra pressure they've put into play, that's going to allow them to make other plays oh. later. Look at this here, though. Oh my gosh, nearly gets the execute on the League of York, who is just able to avoid it in ab skills. Turns the kill right back around. So Marucci Dor's bot lane starting to come a bit more online again, benefiting from over aggressive plays from Mountain Creek. Yeah, they had the right idea there. If they managed to actually land the execute from Hell King, that would have been more than enough to actually allow them to go for a win directly afterwards and maintain, get control back into this lane. But at least Marushador right now really do need to look at their bot side to make the win here. And here comes Sejuani. Yeah, here comes Hurdle, and they've got the stun as well as that damage. Flashing after for Liga Yorick as well. Mountain Creek turns that bot lane back around. Meanwhile, mid lane, a nice two man shockwave out of RZ means Cute Zergling might go for the kill. Boofy Crackers will flash forward to secure something, but I'm not sure that pool is available, so Zergling gets one back just in time for the Hell King to arrive. Lol Kappa gets capped. You see those globules, they bounce and bounce and roll and squish and stomp and no! Oh, a teleport oh, oh. actually keeps Lil XD Kappa alive. Hell King can't quite follow through with that spear. Go by now. Has the counter strike ready to go. Gets the stun onto the Hell King, but the damage not quite there. Cute Zergling will help protect his support and get them out safe. And all of that really does come down to the fact that Mountain Creek takes the advantages, having that extra control on the top side. Cute Zergling was able to push out. That means he was there for the mid lane team fight. That freed up Hurdle to go towards the bot lane and get something back after Maruchador managed to get the kill onto the Hell King. And then the Hell King was like, sweet, fights are happening left, right, and center. I've respawned. I'm going to do the good support deed and make my way towards those team fights. And everything works out in the end for Mountain Creek. And now you can see them starting to push that pressure towards that bot side. The wards are being sent into play. There. They're getting ready to get control of that Drake, and I, I see this getting worse and worse from Maruchador because when I look in terms of scaling, that Vega really does have Kaisa B and everyone else on the side of Maruchador B. It's going to be a tough one for the Maruchador to come back. Maruchidor again, the undefeated team in this matchup, currently sitting 4-0. and This would be their first loss, and it would mean everybody in the regional North Division actually would have a loss, which 
probably makes it the most competitive division right now as Mountain Creek did fall before. I forget exactly who, but I know it was a bit of an upset when it happened. Either way, Murshidor not out of this game yet, but it's going to be kind of come a story of survival for this red side. Can they get to that turbo late game where you get to see perhaps Boofy Crackers and Govai really get online as this is not what they need. Boofy Crackers getting jumped upon by the cute Zergling. Not enough damage to secure the kill just yet, but that's a lot of dragon pressure lost. Yeah, they're just bullying at this moment in time. They had control set up earlier, probably about a minute beforehand. They just walked into place. They cute Zergling realized that this Vladimir is still nowhere near to be coming online. So just jumped on him, said, get on out of here. This is going to be our dragon. This is going to be our control. And now they're set up there, and that is a very explosive Drake that we discussed beforehand to come into play. These cooldown reduction Drakes are absolutely ridiculous for both these teams. Cute Zergling, just taking a little peek over the wall before bouncing back to safety. But yes, it's as if you're a prophet, Mendrix. You called the Cloud Drake, and here it comes. So it's as if, you know, the game sometimes can recognize, you know, this is the dragon these team compositions want. Let's put it out there just to make sure we have as tense a game as possible. Oh, it's the, it's the omnipresent factor coming into play here. You can see that I was actually <laughs> invisible there in the... Uh, in the actual <laughs> studio. I'm also invisible in Summoner's Rift, just guiding the way that these dragons need to go. Uh, that being said, though, I'm trying to think about the next, the big way that Marushido can actually come back into this. I'm looking at those two item power spikes, specifically at the Kaisa and at Boofy Crackers. If you do get a decent engage from the Zac, followed up with a nice Hemo Plague on those power spikes, they really can turn this game around and actually flip this 3k gold lead that Mountain Creek have netted. Yeah, I'm really going to be watching Boofy Crackers for these Hemo Plagues. Uh, traditionally, he is the playmaker for Maruchidor once they start getting ahead. Uh, that is sort of the, going to be that player to watch, although Abskill so far in lane has put a lot of pressure and priority on themselves as well without a lot of jungle assistance. So you kind of have to feel perhaps confidence might be on that side. Yet, it is Cute Zergling who really seems to be taking this game over. This That said, again though, Go Vi completely wins out on that trade. Yeah, and that's purely because finally the Blade of the Ruin King has come up for Govai. It's such a very powerful item on him. You can tell Q Zelzin has gone, oh wait, sweet, I have to actually respect that. Probably will need to actually finish up that next crit item that ends, seems to be in the, in the build there. I believe uh, he's got himself, let's see, is that the Nash's Truth? What is he building that one into? He's already got himself the Essence Reaver. That's worth B. Okay, he's actually being very interesting there in terms of what he actually what he's actually opted into. So I'm actually a bit confused with the build right now. I imagine it's going to be a Infinity Edge next um, yeah. after finishing everything else that's up there. Probably just really really accelerated in terms of what he's done there, but definitely one of those more utility builds coming from the uh, Trinity. But here goes Govai. <laughs> Yeah, Govai definitely taking advantage of that Blade of the Ruin King flash follow-up secures the kill. And Govai will get out, not even close, as he would like to say. Meanwhile, all of the Kappa securing that red buff. All this just in time with Baron spawning in the next three seconds or so. Arzy, very late reaction in Rome. Govai is going to have to be careful right here. Counter-Strike oh, does connect, and the damage perfect. out of this Jax is very much online. Not much Hurdle can do for this save. Maruchidor net themselves a couple picks. Govai played that excellently. Was very patient in terms of the moves they used. Vision to his advantage to actually sit in the right spot. Saw that most of the abilities were actually used by a rise in terms of the hunt they're trying to find him and saying you know where are you in this case i'm going to throw out my abilities here i'm going to jump in there I actually moved out of the ball connect the second time through when he actually stepped out at the right time and just landed a stun there was really nothing that a rise could do in that scenario because he'd used too many of his cooldowns trying to find and hunt him in the process and we're not really respecting that blade of the rune king damage now more action in the bot lane yeah league of york looked to be stuck in a very bad place but in mid lane as well hurdle trying to make the play Big ultimate out of ab skills though, going right after the Hell King. No one's gonna connect, and yet Hell King still finds a kill. Meanwhile, in mid lane, Boofy Crackers forced to go golden, not gonna save him from a hungry RZ. Go, go ahead and drop Shelly as well. This mid tower, not long for this world. Oh, things going from bad to worse for Mountain Creek there. Finally, we get to see the execute damage land for the Hell King. And can you really see the effect that it brings now? Also, add to the fact that they've got the second Rift Herald just barreling down with most of the death time is on at least half the team dead. They're actually going to be able to get three charges off here. And now things just make it unreasonably hard for the for Mushidor to get back. I'm trying to think what it's going to be now, and it's going to have to be off a, bash, a Bosch Baron play from Mountain Creek. It's a really rough position to actually be sitting there and waiting for mistakes on the enemy team for something to come back, and I'm not oh. sure what Govai's thinking here. 
Yeah, that's an uh, enemy mistake, I suppose, but from Mountain Creek's perspective, go Fi. Still has enough tankiness just naturally in order to survive that. Going back though to that fight in that bot lane, I just want to point out again the fact that it looked like Marushi Dora was getting a little bit too over aggressive in that situation, specifically Abskill's Killer Instinct uh, straight underneath the tower. And that's kind of to me looked like what turned that team fight around. And I feel like these are again these same sort of similar mistakes that are being punished by this Marushi Dora side. And that goes back to that idea of, you know, it's do or die at this point in time. A bit of those nerves are starting to kick in as well. Basically, the buttons that you'd normally be clicking correctly at the right times are actually being clicked just a little bit hastily. And it is that idea of, you know, sort of just building up that metal as time goes on. And these are what these competitions are for when we think about it. And I really do think Marichidor still have some semblance of a chance. It just has to be them waitingly patiently now. You know, then you really need to get to that 30 to 40 minute mark and hope that this, they can find Vega. Yeah, that could be the case as the Cloud Drake does get started, but Mountain Creek is here to take it back. Dragon's reset as Goofy Crackers actually gets pulled into a rough situation. The Hemo Plague does not connect onto anyone except for Cute Zerdly, who sort of ran through it, but that's okay. He has an ultimate Shockwave actually throwing League of York into the event horizon. Cheeky little interaction right there. Hurdle still frontlining the counter engage from Marucci Door as Gofi runs straight into a chain of CC, barely able to escape. Cute Zerdly did go down, so numbers advantage in favor of Marucci door, another event horizon catches out Boofy Crackers in no man's land. They will go down. It's one aside. A Draken control, though, in favor of the health bars, and that's Mountain Creek. Yeah, you can really see that the team composition from Mountain Creek was actually letting them down there in that particular team fight. Marucci door with the more standard composition was able to find a decent engage, even though they didn't land all their abilities necessary, allow them to at least come away with, a, with one victory, getting that one for nothing trade. But they decided to jump in a little bit too soon. Very easy for Alphastron just to throw out his point and click ultimate, pick up another killer and return. And the fact of the matter is they're still stronger. They still have that bullying capability and able to pick up that first coveted Cloud Drake. As Weapon would like to say, Mountain Creek still has that ability to sort of beat their opponents down with the wallet at this stage of the game. A 5k gold lead, pretty substantial, especially at 24 minutes. And now again, after getting that Cloud Drake, I like how Mountain Creek, instead of just straight up resetting, decides to take advantage of the map priority that they have, get those deep wards in, and then look to reset so they can get a more sustained siege when they start to push next into Marujidor territory. It's the it's a clean clinical approach. These guys are playing it by the textbook, basically sitting back, aside from their composition in terms of what they've actually picked up with Mountain Creek here, they got yeah. So you know we've got a few of interesting picks here, the Trindamir. Vega, Pike, everything else that they're doing is just standard League of Legends at a pretty high capacity. Get pressure, drop your wards, go for the objectives, kill them if they try to overstep against us, and kill them if they're going to try to fight us in the objectives. I really like the gameplay, it's very solid, and they seem to be winning out purely just on, the, on that mechanic base. And the thing as well, even with the sort of more off-meta picks, it's not as if they aren't playing to the off-meta style. Like, they're still playing around this team composition, just because it's not necessarily an S or A tier team comp that you'll see at a top level professional game. They're still playing what would be a B tier team composition to its utmost potential. And that's what's impressive to me, the fact that they know what their strengths and weaknesses are as a team, as a team composition, and they are playing to it. And that's kind of what separates the good teams in these kind of tournaments and the teams that wind up winning them. As a coach who's actually played around like those concepts, the idea of saying, well, you know what? Just because something performs at 100% capacity doesn't mean the player can play it at 100% capacity. If they can play something at 95%, and if you try to throw them onto something else where they're playing that at 70%, you've already lost in that scenario. That's really well done by Mountain Creek to recognize that type of thing. It's actually a very wise decision to make into place there. Yeah, it's not meta, but so what? I'll be able to play this way better than meta, and that's exactly what's allowing them to win this game. Exactly, as we can see, Hurdle getting jumped upon as he was trying to get a jump themselves on to go by. Void Seeker from downtown. Do we see the killer instinct? Yes, we do. Hurdle's in a lot of strife. Will go down as well as Cute Zergling as soon as the rage ends, but go by does fall in return. Cute Zergling actually escapes somehow. I mean, a true punk rocker, you play around in the mosh pit and then you get out scot free at the end of the day. That really was a base case scenario that Gute Zergling should have been dead by all stretches of the imagination, but again, with that wallet in hand, was able to get out just that little bit, or with a little bit of slither of HP. Maruchador had everything right there. They actually set up their pink wards 
effectively they had control of that particular region mountain creek had no business making their way into it without actually having a little bit of extra control on that top side of the map of lane uh, by pushing out that lane a little bit further first hand and that allowed marucha to actually get the collapse and get some sort of signs of life back into this now they're getting some gold underneath their own wallet in the situation or back into their own wallet and that actually will give them at least some form of arsenal to fight back against mountain creek because again those team fights that baron still is a question mark at this point in time Mountain Creek can botch the execution. So I'm going to kind of pivot a little bit to a previous thing we spoke about before, and that is actually cute Zergling's itemization. Yeah. I see a Sheen now to go with that Stinger. Is it going to be the Trinity Force Trindamir? Has to be. Yeah, basically Triforce <laughs> cooldown reduction. Basically your spins uh, are on a two second cooldown. Which is, you know, again, that utility is amazing, right? You, you jump in, uh, you basically spin it in, auto attack once, you're then able to spin again. That's basically the gist of it. Really tough for ADCs to deal with, especially, and the supports in these scenarios. Um, so that's the big thing that you're looking for here. Go by, though, still has uh, enough damage to put him down to force his ultimate. He'll be able to Q away and with a, with a movement speed get out of it. But there's still kill potential purely because cute Zergling, what he'll do, jump in E, get him down relatively low as well, use his ultimate, follow up with his ease to maintain uh, auto attack pressure and still remain that stickiness and keep that stickiness going and then be able to chase down with the kill. So still kill potential for cute Zergling, but I don't want him to go for Govai. I really want him going after ab skills or Yorick. Yeah, I feel like by going for the Trinity Force Trindamir, it's actually more team fight oriented in that sense because it is sort of that backline threat with that mobility to kind of jump out and back in time and time again. And that could throw Maruchidor off, especially considering their only real hard CC that could lock it down if played correctly would be the Crescendo, I feel like, out of League of Yorick. So Cute Zergling will be very interesting to watch in upcoming team fights if that Trinity Force gets completed. However, Back to what's at hand right now. Another Cloud Drake will be going over to Mountain Creek. It appears as Cute Zergling is playing zoning. Does get caught out just as the dragon falls. Shockwave does not connect, and that's a bit unfortunate. Go by getting jumped upon by Cute Zergling. Unfortunately, the team has its back. Crescendo, though, catches too. Follow up elastic fling shot helps secure the kill onto Alpha Storm as Arzy makes a run for it. Eventually does get out alive. Go by as well. Somehow still kicking. Counter Strike available, but it's not gonna save him this time. Hell King secures that kill as Ab Skills now stuck in between two very sharp and blunt objects. Hurdle secures the kill onto the Kaisa. League of York looking to turn things around. Slingshot does not connect on the Hurdle, but it might not be needed unless the Hell King can turn things right back around straight through the center, but no stun this time. Hurdle still standing alone and actually has the damage to really punish League of York. The support goes down and Lil Kappa, I don't think wants any part of this, is still going to try and go 1v1 against the Sejuani. Goofy Crackers on the other side looking for a way in, but has to hurry. Slingshot holds Hurdle in place who then flashes away from Boofy Crackers and is going to be trying to make their escape down through the river. Oh, so much to break down here, but I think the elastic two shot's going to land. Nice play. Oh. Oh, Hurdle still going for it. Somehow still alive. Low Kappa eventually backing weight. I think they might have conceded this one. However, Hurdle has nowhere safe really to go. Boofy Crackers going to go ahead and start up Gromp, actually. Needs to be cautious because you do have GoFi who's on their team. So, okay, everyone's back on their correct sides. Things have calmed down. <laughs> okay, so the action has finally ceased for the time being. Hurdle got back up to full HP very quickly. Ah, the Warmog. I fully understand the scenario that went into place there. Okay, a lot to break down there. The big key factor here that everyone might have missed is Alpha Storm went down first. He is one of the main damage dealers here for Mountain Creek. As you see, you can look at the you can also look at the Oriana. Yeah, she's got a lot of damage, but she hasn't really hit that three item power spike yet, and has also opted in for the phase rush. That means that her abilities don't really have that quite the same bite in the same case that Vega does, especially because it's been scaling up quite a fair bit. I can say those Qs are definitely getting to a point where they're going to become unmanageable. So to take him out early not only helps out in the damage run, but also helps out in the fact of utility being able to move around those team fights. And Event Horizon is just so restrictive, even at the best of times. But never mind, I can't break it down. Go buy some trouble. Yeah, Govai in a bit of strife right now, tries to get something right back onto Alpha Storm. I'm not sure the damage is quite there yet as Alpha Storm eventually turns it back. Another timely pick right now for Mountain Creek, who admittedly, they've started to lose a little bit of that momentum as Cute Zerling goes into the 1v3 willingly. Uh, okay, yeah. well. 
<laughs> that was a uh, thought. Probably thought I had enough time to actually use the ultimate in that scenario. Didn't realize the amount of damage that can come out of the Kaiser. That is a 229 farm Kaiser with uh, basically the completed Muramana and, of course, has the Ginsu's Rage Blade in hand. And this actually is opening up a lot of opportunities for Marucho, or basically just getting caught out in bad situations. But his engagement hurdle. Oh! The three-man shockwave off of the ball delivery system. That is Hurdle. Completely turns the fight right back for Mountain Creek. Hurdle will probably go down as the rest of Mountain Creek was actually zoned out by Boofy Cracker, who might be now in a bit of trouble. Execute attempt again. Misses just in time for Low Kappa to return. Boofy Cracker secures that kill. Teleport coming through. Go by is back in this fight. Going to take the long way around the event horizon. Gets to the two-man counter-strike. Has the damage on the RZ. Now Alpha Storm needs to run for their life on those tiny little Yordle legs does escape, but Baron Control back in favor of Maruchidor. This is like a poker game moment where you think you've absolutely won it, you can play all the bullying tactics that you want in this scenario. I'm just going to go for an all-in here and basically force you out of this game right now, but Maruchidor are actually holding a straight flush in this scenario, managing to call back so much extra gold for it, and all of it was because of two initial catch-outs beforehand. They catched out the cute Zergling early, and they caught out uh, and the other, the other fact that they managed to catch out, I believe, Alpha Storm just not there in that scenario. From there, they were able to jump in, get control, force fights out of Mountain Creek that they were not prepared to take. They did everything that they could to actually stop the barrier from going down, but even though it was a good engage, it just still wasn't enough because Ab Skills is online, and this is what we're talking about. That 30 to 40 minute mark where Maruchador really do start to come online, and basically it's their time to shine and they need to win the game now. What's uh, painful as well for Mountain Creek is now this Baron buff Maruchidor is going to be kind of breathing down their necks at that exact moment where they would love to be getting this Dragon Soul. However, that's not necessarily going to be an easy take. As you can see, Maruchidor already establishing themselves around that Dragon Pit. I would like to see a bit more lane pressure, especially on that bot side before they fully commit for it. Top side as well. So maybe not completely utilizing this Baron just yet. However, Mountain Creek has to play Maruchidor's game and this is where Maruchidor wants to be. It's their time to hit that power strike. Mountain Creek in a very, very dicey situation. Yeah, all of it comes down to the fact that Govai doesn't have his TP as well, which is why they can't utilize it. But still, look at that damage from Govai and the rest of the team. He's basically been forced out already. And now, all of it comes down to there being a fantastic engage from A-Rise, basically using someone as a ball delivery system. And that's not going to happen as Hurdle is a little bit too late. I kind of feel like Mountain Creek really didn't need to contest that dragon as much as maybe they felt they need to. They can still go for that dragon soul perhaps when the Baron buff is not available and perhaps after they sort of survive this Maruthidor storm. The storm's coming right now. That Eye of the Hurricane is just sort of barreling down bot lane and Mountain Creek still trying to defend. They're positioning themselves there. Meanwhile, look in the mid lane. Cute Zergling actually is constantly getting a tower for free. It's forcing Lil' XD Kappa back. Yeah, you can see they're actually trying to stop the backs here. I don't think Zach's going to be enough to actually stop that as well. He's just going to ignore him and shoot from side to side. Here we go. He's a bit of engage. He's going to walk it out. Yeah, just goes ahead, steps out, and says, you come to me. Meanwhile, down in that bot side, it looks like Maruchidor is going to opt to reset. So Mountain Creek playing to that split push. It does alleviate some of that pressure, and the backs are definitely taking their time right now. Mountain Creek going to be very happy with this small exchange. Yeah, I do like what was actually decided there. Cute Zergling making that play basically put a tough decision onto Maruchidor. There was no way in hell they were going to actually be able to break down two turrets in time. And so that actually stopped them from making any real decisions, getting nothing out of that Baron, except perhaps that really just going to be that Cloud Drake, which to be honest was going to be theirs to begin with after this series of plays that got Maruchidor back into this game. And now Cute Zergling being cheeky once more, setting up a small death bush down below, a death bush as well from Maruchidor. So, you know, if two death bushes pass each other at this dead of night, did they actually exist? Do they know that they are around? Well, it looks like neither trap will be sprung. Arzy forced itself shockwave, does get Govai underneath the tower, but it might not be enough. Flash for Flash, Govai does secure the kill. Hell King still trying to get some retribution, drop the ignite, gets the execute finally. So it's one for one in the bot side. <laughs> Yeah, but the big thing here is that GoFi was able to bring down the support, force out the ultimate, which means it won't be available for the next team fight unless they force something early right now. And I really do like how amazing the zone potential of Vega is, because that actually just stopped them from going for what they wanted to. They were going to use that pressure, go straight down mid and get a tower, but they oh. got nothing. It's a fight. 
Yeah, the fight off of the pick on the Boofy Crackers, but is it the one that Mountain Creek wants? Cute certainly kind of beeline straight for that back line, but I don't see them getting out alive as those missiles take the Trindamir out. Hurdle now stuck on their own. A crescendo use to secure the kill on the juggler, and why not? Four members of Mountain Creek are now dead. Maruchidor, they can push for inhibitors. It was all about that tempo cheat there. They didn't have all the members on the same side of Mountain Creek here when they went for that engage. And like you said, was it the fight that they wanted to go for? No, it was not the case. Unable to find ab skills. And really, this is exactly what Maruchador wanted. Get towards that 30 minute mark. Have enough power spikes in hand and just start plowing through all the infrastructure. Shockwave is in play. Might be another fight. Yeah, Shockwave only connects with one as here comes Boofy Crackers, able to take down the Hell King, RZ as well. Suck in a bad situation, will get back to the Fountain. No Baron and no minions as well, might not matter. Maruchidor still gonna take that tower and look to grab the inhibitor. Just really trying to brute force this win at this stage, but they do need minions for those Nexus towers, so Maruchidor will back off for now. And this is all coming off the back of Govai here. The big reason why they were actually able to win the initial Baron fight beforehand, not only was it because of the Q onto Q Zergling, because, because Q because Govai was able to force pressure on the bot side. They had to send three members to deal with him. That opened up so much map pressure across the map from Maruchidor to set up plays, get wards down, get themselves a few extra kills, and everything now seems to be off the back. And you could see beforehand, yeah, he was able to die with that one for one trade. But the fact of the matter is it was a one for one trade with the ultimate that allowed them to win the next team fight. Because imagine if the Hell King was there that time they went for that engage into Boofy Crackers and actually had his execution available. That would have been a dead ab skills. That would have been a completely different scenario that we just saw unfold with the inhibitor falling down. Instead, we're in a position where Maruchidor is pretty much in that driver's seat and with the inhibitor out of the way and Baron again spawning within the minute as well as that Cloud Drake, which would be a Mountain Creek soul. This blue side again is kind of in a tough situation where they're going to have to sort of play this map optimally. Fortunately, they do have that threat still of cute zergling in that split push. However, go Vi, three items themselves right now should be able to handle cute zergling and that's really going to be stifle Mountain Creek, I feel like. Oh, go Vi can definitely handle this point. That damage Whoa. from Boofy Crackers though. Yeah, Boofy Crackers now definitely seems to be online as well. Welcome to late game Vladimir and Hurdle sort of stuck in the pit. Does have that ball, so we could be seeing a cheeky shockwave instead. Hurdle will escape for it. Again, the stopping the Cloud Drake soul seems to be Merge Door's priority over the Baron. They have those super minions to help out, yet Cute Zergling is still able to find a tower on the top side. Will they get away with the heist? I somehow doubt it. Govai should be able to win this trade. The Undying Rage does get propped and it forces a golden gold buy. The hunt now on. Meanwhile, Cloud Drake is started. So Hurdle gonna look for a way possibly into this fight. You can see the zoning coming for Boofy Crackers, but the dragon's already secured. Hurdle needs to find a way out of it. The shockwave did not get much, and it looks like Maruchidor are gonna back away with the dragon, but no follow-up kills. And Mountain Creek are doing the exact things that they should be doing at this moment in time. Using go cute Zergling to actually force decisions out of Maruchador. But Maruchador now are starting to make those decisions correctly. Let's throw Govai up the top side to deal with cute Zergling. It was a little bit late. And that hesitation ended up forcing them an inhibitor turret. But now Govai actually finds Hurdle. And this might actually be the Baron off the back of it. Yeah, exactly. The play from Govai to distract Hurdle. The Glacial Prison whips and Hurdle kind of just stops to reflect on the poor decisions made in life, perhaps. Either way, Baron is secured by Maruchidor. That is their second Baron this game, and now they're in position to possibly look to end it. And things are getting worse and worse for Mountain Creek. I was saying this beforehand, Maruchidor were the ones that seemed to be struggling, but they managed to just get themselves up to that top of the hill, and now they're flying high. Now the fact that Govai's TP is getting lower and lower on cooldown, they're actually in a very commanding position. You definitely have ab skills online, and of course, Boofy Crackers. And even though I was starting to say around 40 minutes is when you really start to see Alpha Storm come online, they've led themselves a decent enough lead. Having the, having the Baron and a 2k up at this point, all that pressure and the inhibitor down, they can definitely force one more team fight before, before things start to get dicey and basically deliver the killing blow if not at least put the nails into the coffin the one thing Marichidor does have to be mildly cautious of is that exposed inhibitor on the top side of the map. And we've seen Mountain Creek does like to force decisions by activating that sort of split push and pressuring the Marichidor base in and of itself. So keeping tabs of cute Zergling is going to be very, very vital for Marichidor when they look to find possibly the game ending fight. Although Hurdle may have found Govai who's caught out yet again. That is a crucial pick for Mountain Creek.
Yeah, but Rouge will need to act fast now to actually get all the infrastructure on the bot side. That's basically what they're trading for. Three members on that top side basically means that Rouge will need to go, go, go before they have a chance to respond for it. But there is going to be an opportunity for Mountain Creek to find a winning team fight for V5. Oh, Event Horizon does get the back line. Does Mountain Creek capitalize on it? Instead, it's Lil Kappa who goes straight through the center with the crescendo as well as the Hemoplake. The damage is on Maruchidor's side. A huge double kill for Boofy Crackers may have just ended this game. It's only RZ and Hurdle still alive, and there's not much these two can do. Maruchidor, they've got the Baron minions. They've got the wallets and the damage. They're even going to take the Nexus and the game. Maruchidor remains undefeated. And that was well done by Marucho, really just to use that map pressure the entire time, basically leveraging themselves off Govai. As you can see there, Formals just knocked me off to the side there again, decided <laughs> to jump straight into the center. Um, but hey man, after that finish, you can be center stage. Get yourself into that middle of the desk. Why not, mate? Look at yourself there. But mind you, you know who's going to be actually in the center stage? Definitely going to be Marucho. Those guys were basically fighting an uphill battle. Not only did they get to the top, but then they threw a boulder running all the way down to Mountain Creek. Yeah, and I actually want to highlight Boofy Crackers a little bit as well. At one stage, I'm pretty sure that Vladimir was 1-3-1, and one, and I think they finished at like 10-3-6. and six. Just a complete turnaround from that early game into the late game. Lol XD Kappa, I'm pretty sure, had a deathless game as well. So even though Maruchidor was behind, that jungle mid play was able to sort of bring them back. Ab skills as well was kind of winning that bot lane the entire time. So... Mountain Creek, they were playing the map so well and they were playing to their team composition strengths. It just got a little bit too late for them, unfortunately. And Maruchidor, to their credit, did a great job in defending, making the correct decisions when put under pressure and then capitalizing on that window that they created for themselves. I couldn't put it any better myself. Or my, everything about that was literally the capitalization of those decision making. And it all comes down to like, let's just like, Weather the storm, the damage is coming out to it. We've got an Ignite Trindamir. We've got the deal with the fact that there's a very powerful zoning bot lane and a very powerful zoning mid there. They're going to have the pressure. They did exactly that. And when I look at it, I really want to touch on Govai. I think I said it beforehand. This man was basically the one that had a nice advantage. It allowed everyone else to scale up as time went on. And he just forced pressure and pressure. Every time that man went down, it was either because there was three members down his throat <laughs> or he was trading one for one in a 1v2 1v2 situation. So everything there made sense. And Maruchidor knew exactly how to capitalize on the fact that that was pressure being created. And that was a team effort for sure. Yeah, and I mean, what better way to sort of exemplify that team effort than with that team fight at the end of the game. They finally get their own sort of wombo combo through, it felt like, with the crescendo going straight through the Hemo Plague right into Lol XD Kappa's ultimate. It, it just was that dream team fight situation. Despite it being a 4v5, all the only thing that would have made it nicer would have been that Counter-Strike. I'm sure Govai would have been loved to have been alive to see the team's victory. However, a victory nonetheless, and Maruchidor, with that win, continue to be un defeated in that northern regional division and in divisions where only that first place does advance it kind of not only paints that big target on them but they now are that number one team i feel like uncontested maybe mfac beasts will be able to challenge them as mountain creek now has lost to the shalom sharks as well as the maruchidor monsters now i remember what it is so maruchidor will be in first place in this conference and yeah i'm curious to see if mfac beasts are how they will match up against this maruchidor team when I'm looking at it, it's going to be very tough, purely because these guys have the ability to pay, play from behind. And that is something that is very underrated among a lot of teams. There's a lot of teams that can, you know, they get an advantage, they're perfect, they can go that, and they absolutely fall down the moment one person makes a mistake and they're just unable to maintain or actually have a little bit of steam in that. A team that's able to sit back, be resilient, and then come back after losing, that's dangerous because not only are they going to be able to do that, they definitely will be able to play when they've got a lead. And for Marujidor as well, a team that, honestly, when we first saw them, I believe it was even last year when they were playing in our like high school leagues, they were that team that if they had that lead, they would be able to finish, but if they fell behind, they would struggle. So to see them evolve and grow as players over the past two years, again, I keep going back to Boofy Crackers in particular, the improvement from this player, especially playing as a teammate, unless of a solo queue individual player has been outstanding. And that's sort of what these leagues are about, is finding you know, and learning these team skills, these communications, these cooperations, and then throw in the spirit of competition as well and Maruchi Rodora right now definitely should be holding their heads high but
Credit to Mountain Creek, who even in defeat did show that they did understand their team composition. They were trying to play to their strengths. Unfortunately, it felt like the mechanical skill and the ability to capitalize on even the smallest of missteps is what kind of put Marucci Door over the top of them today. Oh, absolutely. And you could really see exactly what they were doing in terms of showing signs of life. Even after those initial missteps, they wanted to play. That's right. Move yourself over. It's my <laughs> turn to have a little bit of a chat. Everything that was those little missteps that they made, that they played initially, goes back to the fact that they said, you know what, cute Zergling, you don't have to be with us. You need to move up towards those sides there, force Maruchido to make some decisions, and maybe they'll make a bad one on the side of it. Maruchido didn't, but that's exactly how they should have been playing the game. So they were understanding what they needed to do. Yeah, and it's always good to see, I suppose, this high-level teamwork and cooperation and gameplay, essentially, in, within these high school leagues. And it only means the future will be bright. That said, unfortunately, it is time to say a good night for today. Again, a big thank you to Legion by Lenovo for sponsoring this event. Thank you, Mendrix, for joining me uh, wherever you happen to be. Are you under the desk? Is that where you've been hiding? Not, not quite there. Probably behind, actually, the stages as... Uh, I believe Don't it look is behind hard. the curtain. Don't look behind the curtain. Okay, and also just real quick, I do want to bring attention as well. If you do like these high school esports, there's a couple events happening in the very near future. Saturday, in fact, is the big day as Meta will be having their regional matches uh, for Queensland. Our representative is Indra Pilly. So we're going to be cheering them on. Uh, furthermore, on Saturday as well, Chisholm is having their high school tournament they're having their uh finals day as well i've been casting some of those games the competition similar to this you know the teamwork is there yes there are some mistakes every now and then but the teams have been improving so i think that grand final day is going to be exciting as well so multiple high school events happening this saturday and on that note, I think it will be time to say goodnight. So one last time, thank you everyone for watching. We will be back here next week. Uh, not sure if it'll be Mendrix or Replace. Kind of leave you all in suspense right there. Either way, I will be back. I've been formal. The Invisible Man has been Mendrix. We'll see you next week.